within the school environment, um, the, the teacher is a single face that would be within um, the school environment. And, that, and, and so um, that is not to say that it is the single most important factor, but within the school environment, which is why we have to focus on, on that. Um, I, I think that's what the research says, and I don't think that's to say that there is any single support. I mean, you know, the kids are complicated, Adults are complicated. Um, there's a whole host of other factors. Um, just like an employee comes with their baggage every day, kids come with their baggage, they might have had a bad morning, they might have an environment, they might have been in an environment, they might not have been. It's all kinds of things. But within the school environment, the teacher is the single most important factor, and that's where all investment should be. And I think that, to be fair, outside of the school environment, right, we know that poverty has immense like plays an immense role in the lives of children and the conditions inside of the school. So um, we published a brief on the role of concentrated poverty in schools and what it means when you hit that tipping point, right? We're not making excuses by saying that kids who live in poverty can't learn, but that does mean that if you have a chronic case of kids with toothaches or a chronic case of kids who are not eating regularly or who haven't eaten since the Friday when you last saw them, that, that provides a concern. And I think that almost everyone here would probably advocate, would probably support a public funding formula which we advocate for every single day. Which would say, we want to wait in place where if you have a school where a disproportionate amount of those kids live in poverty, there's extra funding and resources and there's a different format. <laughs> about English language learners, right? Like my mother always, a mother of nine kids, we grew up in the same house, same mom, same dad, and she would make it really clear to us that Fair is everyone getting what they need, not what they want. So that means that that kid who's learning English is going to need more resources, that's going to need more funding. So I think that, sure, a teacher, when I closed the door in room 204, like I was the most important determiner there, absolutely. And I had to take that on, and that's what you sign up for when you're teaching. But there also needs to be some room and some understanding. And you guys should know that on the outside end, we really believe that this <coughs> funding formula is something that we will continue to work for, and it's something that we see as so critical to fixing this. But I don't think it means that we abandon either one or the other, right? I think it means that we have to do both. We have to think really critically about it. But, but to also be comfortable in that space where there are no quick fixes, there are no answers. I mean, you sound a lot like me in 2007. You sound like you just jumped out of like an institute for teaching colors, right? And, and that will evolve and that will change. You know what I mean? Like that will change for you. But I think that, that it's bigger than any one thing. And if we're not honest about that, then we're not being really good. So that's right. 47 states have a formula based on one number of kids. 37 of our states have a formula that takes into account at least one of the factors she's talking about. Yeah, yeah. And if I, if I could respond both to what, what you asked and to what Shanae said, um, well, to start with what Shanae said, you know, thank you very much for, for sharing that. I mean, I think that that has got to be our number one priority. And I think that that is part of the reason that we're here today, because I see what I see is a coalition coming together to talk about teacher effectiveness, but not a coalition coming together to advocate for a funding formula. And so I think it is a, so it is a question for me about what are our priorities, um, and what are we going to, what are we really going to give our time and resources to? And then to, just to respond to your um, question, uh, I want to, I want to just clarify that I think we should be talking about teacher effectiveness. My concern is that what's dominating discussions is teacher evaluation mm -hmm. and the idea that we have to ferret out bad teachers. Um, the way, and, and teachers in Philly, the way that we um, define teacher effectiveness is the extent to which teachers have the professional flexibility to meet the needs of each of their students. Um, and there are a lot of things that can, can determine or can affect that. I'm going to be a much more effective teacher in some contexts than I am going to be in other contexts. And so it's not just about me, the individual. It's also about the context. And OK, how much freedom do I have to adapt my curriculum to, to meet the needs of my students? Um, how, many resources, how, much, how many resources do I have? All of that goes into teacher effectiveness. <laughs> and none of that is measured with teacher evaluation mm -hmm. that I have. Amen. Thank you. 
is a constitutional obligation on the state of Pennsylvania and that they're a lawyer, I fail to break down. Also, there are other things that we're going to get done. And so our take is we've got to get the money, but if we just think about the money, we don't think about how we go about our business, then we're not going to get where we need to go. So we're tasking ourselves with also another And um, one of the recent, one of the 3,800 laid off in the district, um, although I have spent seven years with the district. Um, and I used to be co-workers with Shanae Garner. Um, and, you know, I, I think that, I think this is a really great event, and I'm glad that we were putting this on. Because it's a, because the discourse is not flat, right? There's a dynamic, which I appreciate that. But I, I think that what you're, what the coalition is maybe coming up against, and I'm noticing, is that there's skepticism and a real critical eye in this room, uh, I think, on this coalition, and that why is it called the Coalition for Effective Teaching? Why is it not called the Coalition for Better Education? Or why is it not called the Coalition to Fight Poverty? Or why is it not called anything else, right? And so I think about the context, and I appreciate that Ron brought up parts of the context on this quick, but what we're seeing, mass school closings, right? Unprecedented budget cuts. Um, we're seeing uh, standardization like we've never seen before. Um, charterization, we're really talk about accountability, uh, where even less public accountability is happening with an even greater percentage of our students in Philadelphia. And, and then I see that so much of that, which is our context in which I teach, is then ushered off into t the blaming me as a teacher. And so I see that this politics and all of this happening, and who is the face of, of the blaming and, and the responsibility without really kind of the, the space and the professionalism and the money and the resources and the time and all the things we've talked about. It's me, the teacher. And so I guess why you're probably reaching this, this, this you're probably getting this kind of skepticism around your coalition is because it's like what I teach my students when we're doing critical thinking. Who does this benefit? To what end? And what is the impetus around it? So I, I would really, and I, I've heard what you've said, but I, I do feel like it's still falling on um, skeptical ears for, for a reason, because we're talking about a very grave uh, situation in Philadelphia. This is a crisis, and so I, I just, again, um, and, and when I look at some of the partners in there, you know, like Aspira, who's using public dollars to fight um, a union being organized at one of their charters, I really do just wonder, to what end? Wow, if you're a 
principal, that must really suck. Um, and <laughs> like, I'm just sort of wondering, um, you know, sort of whether there are reforms um, that um, in, the, in the area of school leadership, um, these, this group here would, would like to enact that we think could maybe, um, you know, improve things within schools. Um, you know, as somebody that's entering kind of a big career, like I know I'm a teacher, but if I want to become a leader in some way in my school, it's very difficult like, to get like a different degree or something and then join management. And I'm just wondering if there are different alternative models that these groups would really support to maybe, um, you know, do better work within schools on the leadership side.
good and smart ways that benefit the system and benefit this is an area that I think needs to be free and Kevin knows the coalition I say is an explicit stand on this the problem for people. We actually favor creating pay grade options for teachers that step into teacher leadership roles such as the, the work that Kathy's talking about. So I think this is a great idea. And wholeheartedly be the job number one should be to try to keep, keep the really great teachers that we have need to do this already. Something that we can do for free change the mindset of leaders towards if you work in a school, you should be empowered to make the influence decisions that happen at that school. Amen. Um, and when we don't have leaders like that, that is happening. Um, so that's a nice free thing to allow others about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for the class. Um, but I'm very silly, but first of all, I was happy to hear Darren talk about, about the leadership. And then when Timmy said, I'm less concerned with the paths to leadership than the oversight of the leadership once it gets there. There's none. There's none. A, a new principal will go self-report that everything's great at the school. Mm -hmm. No one is asking anybody but him or her mm -hmm. what is going on in that building. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. What we could do for free right now to improve teacher effectiveness, since that's the whole big thing we're talking about, is Get the PT, those assistant superintendents who are supposed to be supervising principals to do their job. They're already getting paid for it, and they're not doing it. They're not doing anything. I have, I've still my, we, I have a second year principal, and I've seen his boss once. Huh. And it was a sit off to the side, and then she went and chatted with him. Never talking to anybody in that building, never walking through the building, ne never talking to a kid what they think, never talking to a teacher what they think, never even talking to a parent about what they think. Huh. I have a principal who, who doesn't see parents. You know, it, it's so when what Tim said, like let let us have some say in what goes on. I, I'm just I'm just so tired of hearing about the teacher because a teacher, like a child, is as much as a parent you listen to. A teacher is as good as a principal, and, and that's it. And you have 200 principals. Get them in line before you worry about 12,000 teachers, that's right. because that thing will just happen naturally. But this, these principals are out there just. My husband's doing long-term stuff at the school. I'm not mentioning names, but oh my God. It's just, it's incredible. It's incredible what you hear. I mean, you talk to people across the city. And, and I came through Teacher America, so I went through a cohort with special ed teachers across Philadelphia. And, and nine out of 10 problems that we had were because of the leadership in our school. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a lawyer, I deal with tenure issues every day. Don't do your job. It is not 
are. Do we even have an agreement which is pre-made, right? Which is an agreement where the teacher will resign rather than be forced out. I had one teacher say to me, after I told her over and over again, you cannot lose your temper and throw the kids' papers all over the thing. I gave her a chance to improve, a chance to improve. When I finally told her she had a choice of either sign that agreement or I was going to put her out of the school within a week, right? she said to me, thank you. You're the only person who dealt with me with humanity in my existence in the school district. Every school I've been in, everybody knows who the teachers who can't teach, yes. the teachers who need help mm -hmm. and all. That is why what we call visible administrators. That is why they should be in the classroom mm -hmm. every day. Not to threaten teachers with evaluations, but to help teachers, to help them. That is the climate which I grew up in in the Philadelphia School District from 1975 till 2002. In 2002, when the state took over and imposed full ballots on us, the climate in the school district is a disgrace. Thank All right? You. This report that you guys paid is the worst report I have ever read. It is not backed up by evidence. It perpetuates myths. It doesn't talk about the issues which everybody is here to speak about. Okay. And, and, and that's what's going on here. And we need to be honest. And so just a couple of half of this entire document is about representative principles. It actually reiterates a lot of what you said. So I think when we get emotional, sometimes we don't get we don't want to process any information. Half of the document is about making sure principals are doing their jobs and having principal oversight and providing professional development to make sure that they do better. So I just want to say we're we're with you. Half of this whole thing is about blue and Okay, so and then and then, and then we'll just just my mind. So the other just to be clear, because this was an inaccuracy, we didn't pay for the NCT report. We didn't commission the NCT report. We didn't write it. What we did do is facilitate principals, teachers, community-based organizations to provide input into the report. And it's 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 a study that provides some information, including information about just what you said, which is people leaving. But people leaving the district, which is your right, the brain is a problem uh, that we need to address. We have competitive compensation between folks in the district. And also just to say that the coalition is a separate entity document.